Praise the Lord for His goodness. For His goodness and His mercy last forever. We thank you, radio friends, for inviting us into your presence one more Sabbath afternoon that we can praise the Lord in spirit and in truth, that we can worship Him together, that we can join our hearts together even though we may be miles apart. Oh, hallelujah, for Jesus does not know about the difference in the, the miles. No, that makes no difference in space. That makes no difference in mileage, no difference in distance to Him. Glory be to God. For God, I believe, welcomes us to join Him in a spirit of praise today, for He inhabits the praises of His people. Yes, we're thankful that you've let us come into your presence one more Sabbath afternoon, steering the gospel crusade where you are, that you can be one of us, for there's many listening beside you, and you just help us to make a prayer band that the evangelist is only one cog on this wheel. And if we can keep the motors a-going, we'll all be edified this afternoon. Hallelujah. I'm looking forward to that great and notable day of the Lord when He will return and He will take us to Him. Glory be to God that we can spend about seven years in the heaven and miss the great tribulation here the wrath that was to come that John the Baptist talked about. I'm glad that he'll come and get us in that great and notable day. Yes, praise the Lord. Are you looking for it? Are you looking for the rapture? Are you looking for the day when the graves will burst asunder and the new body joined with the soul will come forth and we'll all arise and meet Jesus in the air? Yes, that's the purpose of the gospel crusade. It is not only to see souls saved, but to see us keep alive in the Lord Jesus Christ. Keep alive with Him forevermore. Now I want to thank all of you who have continued to pray for us from week to week. That's even prayed for us on Monday and Saturday, uh, as well as Sunday. And those of you who have thought of us that did have... that. God blessed you with an extra amount that you could have a little bit to send in on the gospel crusade. Yes, it's those offerings that help us to stay on the air. We all know that these are trying times right now as far as finances is concerned and as well as spiritual. Now then, I want to say that this coming Friday night, November the 5th, Standard Time, 7.30. That Brother Paul Elliott will be here with us. And if you like to hear him, we wish that you would come and be with us. Brother Paul is a man of God. And I love him and I love his location because he's close to us. We have many brethren on the other side of the river that we love too. But that is a distance. And that does make a handicap. But we want you to come, if you will, and to hear Brother Paul Elliott. I don't know what he'll preach on, but I do know this, that he's on fire and he's filled with the Spirit and he's a man of God. And whatever he preaches, it will be from heaven above. Oh, hallelujah. Now this afternoon, we're going to be a looking at the third chapter of First Samuel. If you want to be a turning there, the fir third chapter of 1 Samuel. We're going to have the, read that right now. And then we're going to have a song. Praise the Lord. Looking at the third chapter of 1 Samuel. And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli. And the word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open vision. My, how sad. And it came to pass at that time when Eli was laid down in his place and his eyes began to wax dim that he could not see. And ere the lamp of God went out in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was 
and Samuel was laid down to sleep. That the Lord called Samuel, and he answered, Here am I. And he ran unto Eli and said, Here am I, for thou callest me. And he said, I call not. Lie down again. And he went and lay down. And the Lord called yet again Samuel. And Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. And he answered, I call not, my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed unto him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time. And he arose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. And Eli perceived that the Lord had called the child. Therefore Eli said unto Samuel, Go lie down. And it shall be, if he call thee, that thou shalt say, Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. And the Lord came and stood and called as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel answered, Speak, for thy servant heareth. And the Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I will do a thing in Israel at which both the ears of every one that heareth it shall tingle. Praise the Lord. The ears shall tingle in that day. That would be a blessing to some, but it would be a calamity to others, wouldn't it? To think that the Lord was standing that close to us to speak to us. But there's many people today that have not heard the voice of the Lord. Remember, before we sing the song, I want to bring this out. That Samuel was of the Abraham birth. He had the birth that was on the way to paradise. He had the birth that was on the way, but yet he knew not the voice of the Lord. There's many, I wonder today, that have been saved, that had the new birth. But I wonder how many have heard the voice of the Lord speak in some way, maybe through the Word of God, maybe that still, small voice, maybe in a dream that God speaks to His people. Oh, glory. I thank God that He's able to speak yet again at this time. Aren't you glad? I am. Praise His name. Now at this time, I'd like to have a song, 10,000 years. Just stop and think how long 10,000 years would be. For he said a day was a thousand years with the Lord. Just stop and think what 10,000 would be. Praise his holy name.
Lord 10,000 years, and we've just begun. That's what it said. The song said an amazing grace, wasn't it? After we've been there 10,000 years, we've got no less days to sing his praise than when we first begun. Oh, hallelujah, that we can continue to sing his praises throughout 10,000 years. It may take us that long to explore the heaven that God has made for us. Oh, glory be to God. Yes, now as we look at the message today, thinking about the days of Samuel, one of the old timers, one of the old prophets, that I have failed to find any word that was spoken badly against him. Samuel himself tried to live the life, and I believe that he did a very, very good job of it because he was yielded and he was led by the Lord. You've got to yield to the Lord first before you can be led by him. There's times that we take the bits in our mouth like a horse does, a runaway horse, and we go off in a lope. But God wants us to wait upon the Lord. Those who wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. Hallelujah. Yes, they'll renew their strength, and they'll mount upon wings like an eagle. It says they'll run and not be weary. They'll walk and not faint. They'll run. Yes, Sunday morning, Sunday school, you'll see a lot of them there. But on Wednesday night, when it slows down to a walk, there's some of them that are not there. But yet today we have the word of God. It says back in Samuel's day that the word was precious. That means it was very scarce. I don't know where Moses' law was then. I don't know how many copies there had been written. I don't know. I know that there was priests and that there was scribes. I realize that. But I don't know if that was just one copy. But I do know that in the days of Josiah, that they had dwindled down to just one copy. But thank God we've got the Word today. You'll find the Word in many, the Bible in many homes. You'll find it in the home. But will you find the Word in the heart? Will you find it there? That's where it can do the good. What if the Bibles were taken away from us? What if the Word was scarce today like it was in the days of Samuel? Would we know the Word of God? Would we know the promises that He'd given us? Or have we ever read it through? Praise God, you know, if you've read it through once, and you have read it, actually read it through once, and not just raced through it, God can bring to your remembrance the things that the Word is saying. It said that the vision was scarce. There was no open vision in that day. And when there was no open vision, Oh, how sad, because the Word of God said, where there is no vision, what? Where there is no vision, my people perish. And we want to keep the vision of the Lord in front of us. We want to be like Paul, the old Paul of Tarsus, the apostle in days of old. We want to keep that vision ahead of us to know whom we serve, and to know that He can keep what we've given unto Him. We want to keep that vision today. Be not like it was back there in the days of Samuel, but let that vision broaden out in our lives. Let us look to the side, and let us look to the fore forefront also, and remember that our horizon broadens as we climb. As we climb up the ladder, oh, hallelujah, the ladder of grace. Oh, I know that there's times you still got to get down on your knees to be able to climb the ladder of grace. Yes, Paul said, I die daily. I wonder how many of us take our care to the Lord at the end of every night. Yes, we want to keep a vision, the vision of the crucifixion, the burial, the resurrection, the ascension, and the dissension of the Holy Ghost. 
We want to keep that vision before us. We don't want to lose the vision. We want to keep it. For where there is no vision, God's people are in jeopardy of perishing. I know that I worked with one Sunday school teacher of a different denomination, but he was a just man and he was a good man. We have different outlooks on the scriptures. I know that. We have different interpretations of the Spirit. But this was a good man and a Sunday school teacher at that. And I asked him one time if Ronnie Coyne, the guy who could read out of a plastic eye, if he had ever been to his church, he said if anybody was in our church that could read out of a plastic eye, he said we would kick him out. No, I can't say that. Because the devil only comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He don't come to heal, and he don't come to perform miracles unless he tries to perform miracles like in the days of Moses and Pharaoh just to, uh, well, to degenerate, disintegrate the miracles that God has performed. Uh, he's not going to perform miracles unless he's trying to make himself bigger than God. Oh, I want to see miracles. Uh, praise God, I want to see miracles uh, today uh, just as well. I have seen several of them, folks. I have seen several. It's not lately, but I have seen them in my first life uh, of spirituality 25, 26 years ago. Yes, and some 15 years ago I've seen them. Oh, hallelujah. And I know that God is still in the miracle business. Uh, I know He is because He said in the 12th chapter of 1 Corinthians that that was one of the gifts that He bestowed upon His people was the gift of miracles. Uh, now I think about Eli at the end of life's race. Now he's old now and he's getting blind. It's hard for him to see and to, to take care of the priest officer. He's turned that over to his two boys, over to Hophni and Phinehas. And things have gone awry. He, I don't know what he done. I don't know where he tried to raise his boys right or not. I believe that Samuel's mother raised him right. I believe that when he's sitting in Hannah's lap and she was a feeding him at the table and I believe when he started to put his hand in her dish that she slapped his hand gently to let him know that he wasn't to do that. That he was to mind mama and to love mama and to realize that mama was not trying to steer him wrong. And I believe that he loved his mother and I believe that she loved him very, very much. I believe that Hannah loved her son with all of her heart because she had begged desperately of God to let her have a son that she could give back unto him. Oh, he evidently was dedicated to the Lord when he was in the womb. Yes, he was dedicated to the Lord before he was conceived. And he was one that could respect his elders. That was Samuel. That was different than what Hophni and Phinehas was. It seemed as though that they couldn't respect their dear old daddy. And we see the things coming to an end in the line of the priesthood of Eli. Yes, Ithamar's priesthood would soon be coming to an end because he, God had done told Eli that it was going to happen. And now we see things are happening in other ways. Yes, his boys didn't do the right thing. They had made a mess out of their lives. And it wasn't only making a mess out of their lives, but it had made a mess out of Eli's life. Oh, how how terrible, how bad it is, uh, how awful, if we want to use that word. Uh, it's not always the parents' fault that children go bad because parents can try to raise their children right uh, and then children will in turn leave uh, the home. They'll leave their raising. But if you brought them up in Sunday school and the Spirit of God ever does whisper to them in an older age, uh, they'll come back to the way uh, because Solomon said they wouldn't depart from it when they was old. Oh, yes, it may not be the parents' fault, 
But anyway, it was somebody's fault to see the, the degeneration of the priesthood here in Eli's time. But all we can do is to do our best. That's all that we can do. And we can't do any more. God will help us to do our best if we'll just ask him to. I know that I was working evenings one time. And I always had a hard time of saying no. I had a hard time of saying uh-uh. I couldn't do it. Uh, it's just hard for me to do, uh, even with my children and even with church folk. Uh, and I know I was working the evening shift, uh, and a group of boys come by up there at Walkerville. They come by, and they wanted uh, to take uh, one of my boys out with them that night, uh, and he wasn't of age. Uh, and my wife says, uh-uh, you're not a going with them. You're not going them. And those boys went out, and they got into trouble that night. Uh, but my boy wouldn't speak to his mother for about two or three days. Uh, but when it come time, when he was in the Navy, and he wanted to get into counterintelligence, uh, and they went out trying to find something against his name somewhere, it was good then that he, um, his mother had stopped him. Uh, yeah, it's hard, I know, sometimes to say no to our children. But we have got it to do when we can see them going off uh, on the deep end uh, and going to mess up their life uh, here upon this earth instead of being ready and making ready to enter in to the kingdom of God and be ready for the rapture. But we can see Samuel was a different case because his mother had caught him at home. And I believe that she went up to the temple yearly after that, and I believe that she still may have given him some instructions and told him to listen to God. to Yes, to listen to his elders and to respect his elders. I wonder how many of them today do that. How many of the children today are respecting their elders or out are they out on the street corners at night where they shouldn't be filling their heads with meanness. I just wonder if that could be. Yes, Mama can teach him at home, and she taught him to respect the elders. Hophni and Phinehas should have been taking care of their dad. They should have been helping to do that as well as the priesthood. But poor old Samuel, good old Samuel, had that job, and I believe he done a good job. They, I've looked this up, and they said about this time, that Samuel was around 12 years old when the Lord called him, when the Lord said, Samuel, Samuel. Yes, when he said it twice, he wanted his attention. He wanted all of his attention at that time if he would just listen. Hophni and Phinehas had missed the boat. They'd gone off on the deep end, and God had done told Eli what would happen. But when Samuel come to Eli the third time, and he said, you did call me. Eli says, uh-uh. Now, Eli realized because he'd had it in his days of old before he kind of drifted away from the Lord, and the Word of God didn't come to him anymore. But he knew what was a taking place now. He knew that God was a speaking to Samuel, and he told him, you go back and you listen to the Lord. And he, the Lord comes at other time, and he says, Samuel, Samuel. Oh, yes. Samuel didn't say, I'm getting tired of getting fooled. He'd say, yes, here I am I. Get up and go in and see how Eli was, what was wrong with him. And then he lied, tell him no. But he went three times. Oh, yes, it was in the wee hours of the morning because it said it was before the lights went out in the temple. It was before the lights went out in Shiloh's temple at that time. And so it was in the wee hours in the morning, just before then. But he'd get up and go. He didn't say, Eli, I'm getting tired of getting fooled. He didn't say that. But he listened to Eli. And I just wonder now how old Eli felt when he knew that the Lord was a talking to Samuel. He'd had the Lord had talked to him already. He was 98 years old and having a hard time to see. 
but he knew that the time had to come because the Lord had prophesied it. And he knew that the Lord would be talking to Samuel because he might have heard Samuel say, Speak, my Lord, for thy servant heareth. And he may not have heard what the Lord told Samuel. But the next day he asked Samuel, he says, What did the Lord tell you? He said he told him everything, that the Lord was going to bring an end to the house of Eli, that the priesthood of Ithamar would not be main anymore. The days would come when Solomon would kick out Abiathar from being priest and put Zadok in his place. That day would come, and he told him all that the Lord had told him. And he says, all right, he realized that the day was a coming. Oh, my God, my God, Lord, help us. Father in heaven, we say, help us, God, today. Lord, that the heart can grasp your word, that our heart can contain your word, Lord, and that our mind can apprehend the vision. Lord, that we can know that Jesus is still the Son of God. Lord, that we know that there's a thing of getting saved, of being saved, and then there's a thing of turning our back upon God. God, keep us in the driver's seat, pressing on toward Zion. God, just help us from day to day. Lord, that we can pray that more souls can be saved and lives can be filled by your Spirit, Lord, as we see sickly bodies healed in the sweet and the lovable name of Jesus and for his glory, amen and amen. And until this time next Sabbath afternoon, this is Evangelist Garland Williams returning you to your announcer.